said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in, infir in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. And Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. This morning, uh, we want to use for a subject, the power of grace. The power of grace. Focus in our attention on that ninth verse, which I'll read again for the hearing. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And I remind you that this is Jesus talking. Most, and, and that's the end of that quote, most gladly, therefore, says the Apostle Paul, will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Because what? Because Christ had said to him that uh, his strength is made perfect through, in what? In weakness. And uh, so, uh, to be weak and to be a Christian, Jesus says that's a good thing. Yes. Because when we are weak, then uh, his strength is perfected in us. Yes. The power of grace. Well. There is nothing that is stronger than grace. All right. Absolutely nothing that is stronger than grace. Grace woke me up this morning. Amen. Well, grace started me on my way. Yes, yes, yes. Grace turned me away from sin. Yes. Grace helped me to overcome the wretched creature that I was. Yes. Grace is the only explanation that I have for people when they say, well, what happened to you? You're not like you used to be. Yeah. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. Yeah. And grace, my fear is relieved. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul found this out the hard way. It was not until he realized the weakness and the limits of his flesh that he got a clear understanding of the power of grace. Yeah. You know, when we're young and hold high-ranking positions and uh, people hold us in high esteem, we get full of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, we make statements like, I have a ride. Mm -hmm. And we start uh, walking the road. We walk different. We talk different. Mm -hmm. We even dress different, but, uh, but Campbell, That's right. Right. Get a few more dollars in our pockets, and man, we we put on outfits with matching shoes and shirts and ties. Look and, out! Look out! Look out! And put on outfits with with not only uh, matching shoes, the purse matched the shoe. <laughs> and uh, we 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 truly we truly uh, feel uh, good about ourselves, yeah. but. I'm here to tell you, as Apostle Paul uh, realized, that flesh is weak. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the weaker the flesh is, the stronger the power of grace is. Yes. For grace is made perfect in weakness. Yes. So I want to let you know this morning, if you're not feeling all that strong, if you're not feeling all that good about yourself, if you feel shameful for who you are and what you are, if you feel like you're not worthy, join the club. Well. 
Yeah. They're in the club and say, glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. For Jesus says, when we are weak, then he is strong. Uh, why is it that uh, uh, God has such a tough time dealing with us when we get full of ourselves? Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible goes on to say to us that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And yet we all want to be rich. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 the Bible has more warnings about riches than uh, hindering us getting closer to God than anything else. Since the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money is the root of all evil, but the love of money yes. is the root of all evil. And it, it seems as though as we uh, are, are blessed by God, it seems as though as we are blessed with the things of this world, we focus more attention on the blessing and less attention on the bless yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get full of ourselves. Yes. The Apostle Paul was one of the most decorated, <coughs> celebrated, and exalted Israelites of his time. Yes. He was decorated and celebrated to the extent that he even uh, 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 had this testimony of himself as he repeats in Philippians chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. He testified of his claim to his superiority in the flesh, not in the spirit, but in the flesh. He said, as it relates to folks in this world, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. In other words, I'm one of God's people. Yeah. I'm of the nation of Israel. And nobody can be greater than God's people. He says, uh, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin. The tribe of Benjamin had some of the fiercest warriors uh, of their time. And Hebrew of the Hebrews. And as touching the law, he said, I was a Pharisee. Pharisees were the teachers of the law. They were interpreting the interpreters of the law. They were the proclaimers of the law. They just didn't live the law. <laughs> Concerning zeal, it says, man, there was nobody more obsessed with uh, being number one. There was nobody obsessed more obsessed uh, with being uh, uh, the most talked about and, and the most popular to the extent that I even persecuted the church. Ah, ah Because I believe that uh, those church folks, they were wrong. Yeah. Because I was of the, what did, what did he say? I, I was the tri I was of Israel. Right. I was the nation of Israel. Israel's God's people. And we believe as Israelites, the Lord our God, He is one God. Yes. And now you come along, you church folks talking about <laughs> you believe in Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God and who is God. That that that's blasphemous. And I'll I that is so blasphemous that I will not only uh, protest it, but I will kill you. Well, even make it such a statement. Yes. I will kill you for believing such a belief. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some of that going on today, don't we? Amen. Yes, we, do. we have some religions who believe that their religion is so right that they go around blowing up people. Mm -hmm. They go around not only blowing up and killing up people, uh, they go around blowing up and killing up themselves. Yeah. Yes. Because they believe that their God mm. is the, the, the true and living God. They believe that their God is the only way. And I, I, I say to you all, and I say to anyone, if you believe your God is the true and living God, and you believe that he got to kill people to make them believe in him, you ought to take a closer look at your God. Amen. 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 God is not 
making anybody believe that he created them. God is not making anybody believe that I gave you the sun that warms you by day. God is not making anybody believe that I provide the air that you believe. He's not making anybody believe that I put the stars in the sky. He's not making anybody believe that I provide the food that you eat every day. He's not making anybody believe that I keep your heart beating. All right, all right, all right. Oh, my Lord. But if you got any sense at all, <laughs> a fool says in his heart, the Bible says that there is no God. He woke me up this morning. Yes, he did. Started me on my way. But here we got folks going around killing people because you don't believe that God is God. Obviously, yeah. you don't believe he's God either because if you believe he's God, you in trouble. Man. But God is love. And certainly, he would not kill anyone. But the Apostle Paul was so full of himself that he went around persecuting the church. Some of these religious believers today are so full of themselves that they go around killing people to make them believe as they believe. Not only do they go around killing people, they go around killing themselves. Mm -hmm. Not only do they kill themselves, Deacon Harris, but if they got family members, sister, brother, mother, father who turn away from what they believe not only will they uh, 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 deny them as part of the family, they will kill their family members yes. for not believing as they believe. So Pastor Paul says as concerning zeal no one was more zealous than I am. I persecuted the church, and uh, isn't it something when, when you're self-righteous, you say, touching righteousness, which is in the law, I was blameless. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't lie. Mm. I didn't steal. Mm -hmm. But Paul, how can you blame, say you're blameless, and the law says thou shalt not kill well, well, I was killing in the name of the Lord. <laughs> so he said, touching the Lord, I was blameless. So uh, in the flesh he was, allowing me to say he was a bad dude. <laughs> bad dude. He's bad as single. But then one day, the apostle Paul, thank God, thank God for Jesus. One day, yeah. one day, uh, as he was on his uh, way to uh, will his fleshly powers. I've got authority from the chief priest. I've got authority to destroy all those who are in the way. What's the way? Are you in the way? <laughs> Jesus is the way. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is the yeah. truth. And Jesus is the life. And so he, he was out and he had permission from the high priest, he had permission from the Sanhedrin. The government gave him authority to destroy all those who believe in such a thing. One day, one day, uh, uh, as he was wailing his fleshly powers upon the saints of God, he came face to face with what? Grace. <laughs> Talking about the power of grace. Grace knocked him from his horse. Yeah. Wow. And never touched him. <laughs> Talking about grace. You ever been knocked down by grace? <laughs> and grace never taught you. You ever thought that you were on top of the world and the grace brought you to your knees and said, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within. Lord, have mercy. I, I thought I, I had a grip on things. I thought I had a grip on life. I thought I had control of who I was and what I was and where I was going and what I'm doing. But now I'm finding out that the things 
of this world can quickly slip away. Yeah. If you think the things of this world can quickly slip away, I'm going to remind you again, as I often do, a Steve Job, who was the head of uh, Apple Computers and was one of the richest and most esteemed people in the technological world, which in reality rules this world now. He was in his early 50s, and he had more money uh, than one heart could desire, more money than he could ever spend in his lifetime. The God, God knocked him from his horse, and sickness came upon him. And all the doctors, all the money in the world could not sustain him. He, 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 he came up on the power of grace and, and we pray that not only did he uh, 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 get knocked down by the power of grace, but he, he realized that his grace, that God's grace uh, reaches out to everyone. Yeah. That it is not his will. It is not God's will. And I, I must make this point. Uh, I don't want to be misunderstood. It is not God's will that any should perish. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Not Steve Job. Not those who don't believe as Christians believe. Not the, the prostitute. Uh, not the drug addict. Not the homosexual. Not anybody. It is not God's will that any should perish. Well, well preacher, if it's not God's will that any should perish, what, what is it? But that all should repent. And I said all. I didn't say just those people I named, but that all should repent for all have sinned. And come short of glory of God. Yes. Yes, yes. There is none righteous. No, no not one. Mm. And while we were yet sinners, yes, yes. God commended his love yes. toward us. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And sent grace. Yes. <laughs> the power of grace, yes. the only thing that all can overcome sin, and by grace. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Thy grace are ye yeah. saved yeah. through faith. Yeah. And yeah. so repent of your sins. All of us, not some of us, but all of us, repent of your sins and be saved. To those who are unsaved, we're not Christians because we're better than you. Right. We're Christians because we repent it. Yes, yes. And getting running saying, I yield. I get all out. I'm a wretch and I'm undone. Woe is me. What shall I do? What must I do to be saved? Yes, 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 yes. Grace knocked us from our hearts. Yes, yes, yes. And then that same grace that knocked us from our hearts picked us up. Yes, yes, yes. And cleaned us up. Yes. Yes. And set us up on a rock. Yes. Yes. The power of grace. A, a wretch that I was. A wretch that the apostle Paul was. And he picked him up. Lord, what would thou have me to do? Now here's a man who has been so obsessed with the flesh and the power of the flesh that uh, uh, you wonder how in the world could God possibly love him? But he picked him up. Yeah. You wonder in your mind, well, God, why are you gonna lose somebody who's been killing Christians? He's a murderer. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. He's a murderer. He picked him up, and it says, and Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul said, Lord, who art thou? He's repenting now. He's met the power of grace. Uh, he, he, he has used his fleshly powers to persecute Christians. He has used his fleshly powers to rise to fame. And now he says, I count it all but done. Because mm -hmm. yes. well, I met grace. Yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. And he said, I'm willing to give it all up. Mm -hmm. What will thou have me to do? Mm -hmm. I can imagine that Apostle Paul had no idea that God would use him in the way that he did. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Being that he killed Christians and he persecuted mm -hmm. men, women, children, boys and girls mm -hmm. yes. who were found in the way. Yes. He forgave Paul. Why did he forgive Paul? Because Paul asked to be forgiven. Yes, yes. And I say to you this morning, if you want to be forgiven of God, yes, yes. there's no sin right. in your life that God will not abundantly forgive if you just ask. Yes. Yes. Scripture yes. says that uh, 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 if we will confess our sins, 1 John, mm -hmm. if we will confess our sins, he's faithful to, uh, just and faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if you say you have no sin, no. you're lying. There's no truth in you. How can anyone in their right mind say that they don't have any sin? But that's what that's what sin does. It blinds you. Uh, that's the power of sin. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. I, I can't let uh, uh, Minister Campbell and Minister Henderson and Deacon Harris know that I was just as wretched as they are. All my life, they thought I was better than them. Now, I'm going to stand before a church knowledge that I was a sinner. And that there were some things in my life, my life that was as unworthy as anything that they have encountered. But the Bible puts the brand on and says that our righteousness those of us who think we are right, that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Right. Yes. 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 There is no good in us. And until you come to that realization that there's nothing you can do to save yourself, that there's nothing in this life that is worth gaining to the extent that you're going to lose your soul. What does it profit a man yes. if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Yes, 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 yes. When God stands ready and willing to cleanse you and forgive you and make you children of the Most High God, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's things that you want. God says, come unto me. If it's things that you want, God says, believe on my son Jesus yes. and I will make you children yes. of the most high God. Yes. What more can you ask for? Right. What more can he do right. than for you he has done? I'll make you one of my own children, yes. the creator of the world. Yes. Who's your daddy? God is my daddy. Yes. 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 And he takes good care of me. Yes. Yes. How much money he got the earth is the Lord. Yes. Full the stare yes. Yes. The world and they that dwell there. And he hath made me join heirs. Yes. Thank you. My, 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 my. Yes. Thank you. And you already got that if you believe. Yes. You're not waiting to get that. Yes. 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 Your name is already in the will. And it's just a matter of time. Yes, Lord. When we're going to share this old robe of flesh, mm -hmm. we are going to fly away. Mm -hmm. Race knocked him from his horse and threw him into the ground, talking about the power of grace. Mm -hmm. But what does grace do for you? What is this power that in grace that is in grace? First of all, grace taught Paul how to pray. Uh, Apostle Paul, as he was serving God, Scripture right. indicated that uh, there was a messenger of Satan, uh, uh, a thorn in the flesh that buffeted him when he was trying to do the work of God. 
And so, uh, to overcome uh, this thorn in the flesh, the Apostle Paul prayed unto God. Yes. Now, it's a lot we can learn from how he prayed unto God. Scriptures say he prayed three times. Mm -hmm. So many of us, so full of ourselves, we tell ourselves, well, if you ask the Lord for it one time, you don't have to keep bothering the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Paul prayed three times. Jesus went in the garden and prayed three times. Yes. And you think you don't need to pray for one? <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> and so the apostle Paul said three times I prayed Lord remove this thorn from my flesh yes. uh, what was that thorn uh, the best I could tell the thorn the thorn was uh, scripture says it was a messenger of Satan that buffeted him I, I believe that it was it, it was one of the folks who knew Paul before he got saved All right. Okay. Okay. And, and every time Paul was Going around preaching about believe on the Lord Jesus, and uh, uh, thou shalt be saved. This, this, this dude who used to ride with Paul, going to kill Christians, would be back in the crowd. Remind him. And and, and sometimes uh, 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 those folks who knew you but got saved before you got saved will do that to you. And then not only will they do that to you, it will have a tendency to remind you where you came from and start making you have guilt feelings and, 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 and feel uh, bad about yourself, feel bad about what you've done. But yes, I feel bad what I've done, but bless the Lord, yes. my sins all have been forgiven and thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. You can come along and mock me all you want. You can come along and remind me of who I was all you want, that's okay. Uh, you can threaten me with letting the people know, man, some of the stuff this boy did, that's all right. Uh, and, and, and yeah, I might get persecuted for you telling me, telling them about some of the stuff I did in the past. But uh, though they persecute me, I want to let you know God has forgiven me. And you don't have to help it. Uh, or hell to put me in. Talk about me as much as you please. Yes, I was a scoundrel. Yes, I was a wretch, but I was. Amen. I'm now, I'm now yes. saved by grace. Yes. Yes. Amazing grace. Yes. The power yes. of grace. And so three times the Apostle Paul said, Lord, get this idiot from following me and, and, and try to embarrass me and tell people about the stuff I used to do. Lord said, Paul, my grace yes. is sufficient. Yes. sufficient. Yes. Yes. Don't worry about what they do to you. Uh, uh, remember what I've done for you. Yes. I've forgiven all your sins and I took your sins and I threw them into the sea of forgetfulness. Uh, stop paying attention to them. You see, we, we get too caught up in trying to please everybody. You're not going to please everybody. And with some people who are going to talk about you, and, and they're going to put you down no matter how much good you do. Yes. But we're not here to please man, are we? Uh -huh. Lord, the word says, he that loved mother, father, sister, brother more than me. All right, all right. See, we have a tendency to get so caught up in mom and father and sister and brother that we don't do what the Lord would have us to do. All right. Because mom and bro mother and father, sister and brother keep reminding us of who we were and where we came from. But God says if you love them more than me, that you're not fit for the kingdom of God. So I tell you my grace is sufficient. You stop worrying about those people and how they're following you. You keep lifting up the name of Jesus. And, and maybe, maybe somewhere along the way, they're going to hear what you say. Yes. Maybe mother and father. I'm not talking about nobody else. Or I don't know about your mom and daddy. But if they're not saved, if you keep telling them about Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. yes. If you keep... Uh, live in the life if you keep doing what God has assigned your heart and hand to do no matter how much they talk about you right. no matter how much
once they put you down. Maybe one day. One day, I heard somebody testify this morning. If your relatives don't know Jesus, the time you spend here with them on earth may be the last time you see them. Because after, 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 after uh, they leave this life, after they have to press a dying pillar, if they don't know Jesus, then they don't have that blessed assurance in the word. That uh, we're going to, to be absent from the body is not death for us, but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So grace taught Paul how to pray. And uh, extending on that a little bit, we think when we pray, Paul said, remove this stone from my flesh. We think that God is supposed to answer but sometimes God uses the thorn in your flesh to keep you humble. To keep you yes. from getting full of yourself. Yes. Yeah, you, you think because you're a Christian and you testify and pull the Holy Ghost fire and the Lord blessing you. Uh, 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 that you get, 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 you know, I'm blessing you material. Get a little full of yourself. But I have to let them folks from your past every now and then. Mind you where you came from. Yeah. So no, I'm not going to take them away. I need to keep you humble. Uh, isn't it something that some of our Christians, God cannot bless with material things? Because if he bless them with too many material things, uh, uh, they're going get, to uh, get too wrapped up in the things and less wrapped up in him. He got to keep us poor to keep us safe. Isn't that pitiful? 